Hello and welcome to another episode of the Pharmaceutical Calculations Solve Along. In this video, we're going to take a look at a quick review on percentage strength and ratio strength calculations. Now, if you need a much more detailed explanation, I'm going to put links to several videos that we have on the channel that will help you understand the topic much more in detail. And I'll put those links in the description. Now, if you are watching this live, just leave your questions in the chat box. And if you are watching the replay, you can go ahead and leave your questions in the comment section and I'll get to them as soon as I see them. Now, having said all of that, let's dive right into the first question. So here, the question says, what is the percentage strength of an injection that contains 50 milligrams of phenobarbital sodium in each milliliter of solution? round to the nearest whole number so this question really is designed to remind us of the definition of percentage strength when you talk about percentage strength you are referring to the amount of grams in 100 milliliters that's if it's a solution so just as a quick reminder there are three different types of percentage strength you have weight and volume volume in volume and weight in weight so the distinction here is the nature of the solute which will be in the numerator and then the nature of the preparation right so if you have a solution it's going to be a solid in a liquid if you have a liquid preparation you can have a liquid in a liquid and if you have an ointment for example you can have a solute which is a solid in a tooth in a preparation that is solid so regardless, it's always going to be grams of some substance in 100 milliliters for a solution. Okay, so this should be for the weight in volume. When you talk about volume in volume, it's going to be milliliters over 100 milliliters. And when you talk about weight in weight, this is going to be grams over 100 grams. So the goal here really is to remind us of what the definition of percentage strength is. Now, with that in mind, when you go back to the question, it says the injection contains 50 milligram of phenobarbital in each milliliter. So because this is a weight, uh, milligrams denotes weight, right, or mass. So we know that the solute is a solid, and it says in each milliliter, so we know we are dealing with a weight and volume scenario. Okay, so that's important. And because we know where we are, we know that we need to have the expression in grams per 100 milliliters. Okay, so the strategy kind of unfolds because the goal would be to convert the milligrams to grams and then try and set it up as a ratio. So what that would look like is we will start off with 50 milligrams we will go ahead and convert that to grams. So a thousand milligrams is equivalent to one gram. The milligrams cancel out and you essentially end up with 0 0.05 grams. Now this 0 0.05 grams is present in each milliliter. So if you're going to express that mathematically, then you're going to have 0 0.05 grams in one milliliter and with this ratio we can go ahead and set up a proportion which will help us determine the percentage strength so the way you do that is to say this is going to be equal to some quantity in grams divided by 100 milliliters so when the question is asked where did you get the right hand side from that is from the definition of percentage strength weight and volume so the way it works is when you go ahead and solve for x, which is your unknown, you're going to end up with a value, and that value will be your percentage strength. So let's go ahead and do that. We solve for x. x is going to be equal to 0 0.05 grams times 100 milliliters divided by 1 milliliter. The milliliters cancel out, and this is going to be equal to 5%. So that's the first example. And once again, the goal here was to remind everybody of the definition of 
percentage strength, whether it's a weight in volume, volume in volume, or weight in weight, and everything kind of unfolds. All right, so we can go ahead and look at the next question. So here the question says, if an injection contains 0.5% weight and volume of deltaizam hydrochloride, calculate the number of milligrams of drug in 25 milliliters of the injection. Round to the nearest whole number, do not include units. And so here, what we've been given is the percentage strength, we have 0.5% weight and volume. And the task here, or the goal is to determine the number of milligrams of the drug in a specified volume. So this time, if you compare this question to the previous one, here the goal is to use the understanding of percentage strength to determine the quantity, the actual quantity of drug that you need for a specified volume. So we can go ahead and, first of all, make use of our understanding of what percentage strength is. Yes, it's also a weight and volume. So 0.5% implies that you have 0 0.5 grams in 100 milliliters okay so with that understanding we can then say well what would be the quantity in the 25 milliliters so x grams in 25 milliliters and then you can go ahead and solve for x which is your unknown so x is going to be equal to 0 0.5 grams times 25 milliliters divided by 100 milliliters the milliliters cancel out and you end up with 0 0.125 grams. But you don't stop there because the question was asking for quantity in milligrams. So you need to go ahead and do a quick conversion, a very quick one. And the way that will work is we multiply this by the conversion factor. One gram is equivalent to 1,000 milligrams. The grams cancel out. And then that will give you 125 milligrams. But you always want to pay attention to the conditions of the question. It says round to the nearest whole number. 125 is a whole number, so that's fine. But it says do not include units. And so if this was an exam, you want to put 125 as your answer. All right, so that's the second example. We're going to keep practicing. And each example is going to give you a new layer of understanding as you go through those questions. So here, question three says, how many liters of a 2% weight by volume iodine tincture can be made from 123 grams of iodine? Round to the nearest 100, do not include units. So this is another example of percentage strength, weight, and volume. But there's a slight distinction with this question, which is important to pay attention to. The phrase that we are referring to is can be made from, okay? So anytime you see something that can be made from or can be prepared from, it's alluding to the fact that this quantity, the 123 grams of iodine, that's your solute, not your total preparation. And that has often been an issue where students get confused, so you want to pay attention to some of those keywords. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with the 2%. And 2% implies you have 2 grams out of 100 milliliters. So 2 grams of iodine in 100 milliliters of the tincture. So we can go ahead and set up a proportion, a very quick one. And the question normally for most of us is where does the 123 go? Now, because it's a proportion, even your units can be your guide. So you should have the same units in the numerator on both sides of the equation. Or if you are doing this from real deep understanding, then you know that in this question, the 123 grams is your solute. So that will go to the top here, 123 grams. And we are 
and we need to find out how many liters ultimately but because this is a proportion we will put here x milliliters and then we'll go ahead and solve for x x is going to be equal to 100 milliliters times 123 grams divided by 2 grams and that's going to be equal to okay the grams cancel out and that's going to be equal to 6150 milliliters now you don't want to stop here because the question says how many liters okay so we do a quick conversion where a thousand milliliters is equal to one liter the milliliters cancel out and that's going to be equal to 6.15 all right so the important distinction once again is we have an example where this time around you've been given the solute and you now need to know the volume of the total preparation okay so keep those distinctions in mind let's take a look at the next example So here the question says how many milligrams of broken hydrochloride should be used in preparing 120 suppositories each weighing 2 grams and containing 0.25% weight by weight broken hydrochloride round answer to the nearest whole number do not include units so in this question what we've been given is the percentage strength but it's on a weight by weight basis so just to recall whenever you have a weight by weight basis the definition of that percentage strength is grams out of 100 grams so the first thing that this allows us to do is know that you have 0.25 grams of broken hydrochloride in 100 grams of the mixture but notice you are preparing 120 suppositories and each of those suppositories weighs two grams so the strategic approach here is to first determine the total weight of the suppositories okay so the total weight of suppositories is going to be equal to the 2 grams times the 120 and that's going to be equal to 240 grams now by doing it this way it makes it easy for you to actually answer the question because the next thing you're going to do is set up a proportion using the definition all right so 0 0.25 percent is 0 0.25 grams in 100 grams and that's going to be equal to some quantity in grams over the total quantity that we need to prepare so that's 240 grams so you go ahead and solve for x x is going to be equal to 0 0.25 grams times 240 grams divided by 100 grams the grams cancel out and you end up with 0 0.6 grams now you don't want to stop here because the question is saying how many milligrams right you always want to read the question to make sure you're answering the question and so we convert the grams to milligrams using the conversion factor that one gram is a thousand milligrams the grams cancel out and that's going to be equal to 600 milligrams So hopefully all of this is making good sense and if you like this type of content just be sure to leave a like so that other students or some of your colleagues can also benefit from the content but let's move on to the next example so here you have a prescription and actually saying how many milliliters of tolibalsam tincture should be used in preparing the following prescription so you have the prescription has been given you you have the resin of podophyllum it tells you the percentage strength of that and then you have the tolu balsam tincture so we are interested actually in this component the tolu balsam tincture and you've been given the percentage strength which is five percent but notice it's on the volume and volume basis all right so the strategy here is to take this percentage strength 
which will be five percent and that implies that you have five milliliters over 100 milliliters so the question becomes what do you do next all right so what you want to do is set up a proportion so this would be equal to some quantity in milliliters divided by a specified denominator now the denominator that we are going to use or the value we're going to use in the denominator is going to be the 30 ml because that's the total quantity of this preparation of this prescription so the 30 goes in the denominator here 30 milliliters and so you go ahead and solve for x and when you do that you're going to get the actual volume in milliliters of the total balsam tincture that you actually need for this prescription all right so once you've completely and accurately interpreted the question the math becomes very easy that's what i want to emphasize in this particular video all right so you go ahead and solve for x x is going to be equal to five milliliters times 30 milliliters divided by 100 milliliters the milliliters cancel out and you end up with 1.5 milliliter so the question says round to the nearest tenth 1.5 the point 0.5 is actually indicating the nearest tenth but we don't want to include the unit so the answer is going to be 1.5 all right so once again if you are watching this live if you have any questions just drop it in the chat i'll try and answer it as we go along if you are watching the replay just leave your questions in the comments and i'll get to them as soon as i see them all right so we're going to move on to the next example. And here the question is fairly straightforward. Like I said, this is supposed to help us just have an appreciation of the concepts of percentage strength and ratio strength, how you need to convert between both of them, and also how you become experts in understanding the question. So if you're a beginner, this is an excellent video for you. And if you're an expert, this is a good review for you. All right, so the question says, convert a ratio strength of 1 is to 480 weight by volume, 2% strength, round to the nearest 100. Do not include the percent sign. So what this question actually is reminding us of is what the definition of ratio strength is. Ratio strength is always going to be 1 gram over some milliliters and now this is for a weight and volume scenario but whether it's weight and volume weight and weight or volume and volume the numerator value is always going to be one It's one is to something all right so here when you have the one is to 480 it implies you have one gram in 480 milliliters now how do you know it's milliliters because it's weight in volume okay so now that you've determined that, the question becomes, how do you convert to percent strength? Then you also need to recall the definition of percent strength. So when you have a volume, a weight and volume scenario for a percentage strength, it's actually going to be grams over 100 milliliters. So what we want to do is combine or synthesize both concepts. And so this one gram out of 480 is going to be equal to some quantity in grams out of 100 milliliters so you go ahead and solve for x when you solve for x that value you get that will be the percentage strength so x is going to be equal to one gram times 100 milliliters divided by 480 milliliters the milliliters cancel out and you end up with 0 0.21 percent We do have a comment, so I want to give our viewer a shout out. This is Francis, and he says uh, he's a level 100 pharmacy tech student and loves the video. Thank you so much, Francis. Thank you for watching the, this particular video and for being an active member in the community. We appreciate that. All right, so we'll keep going. This, uh, this question, once again, I'd like to give the rationale for this question. The, the reason is we want to know how to communicate between ratio strength and percentage strength you you'll be frequently required to do that conversion and it's good to understand the concept so that you can easily do the conversion so once again ratio strength is one over something and percentage strength is for weight and volume is grams over 100 ml that's important 
let's move on to the next example we are almost done with the questions for today but i think we have about three more so we'll keep going all right so this question actually is indicating that uh, an injectable solution contains two percent weight in volume lidocaine hydrochloride and one is to fifty thousand weight in volume epinephrine how much of this solution would the patient need for a 50 microgram dose of epinephrine round to the nearest tenth do not include units now there are a few things you want to note in this question you'll be given a lot of information or more information than you actually need to solve this problem and so Understanding the question involves knowing which set of information to use. That's where most of the time we get it wrong as students, right? In this question, the goal or the whole question is about epinephrine. You no, know, the question is saying how much of the solution gives you 50 microgram dose of epinephrine. So because we see epinephrine here, we do not even want to, we don't even want to focus on the lidocaine lidocaine is not going to help us here so we're not going to use that information everything is going to be centered around the one is to fifty thousand, and that's what you are going to use for our computation now if you are able to do this from the beginning everything else becomes fairly straightforward the other thing that i also want to keep in mind is we want to understand what the one is to fifty thousand means it implies you have one gram of epinephrine in 50,000 milliliters of solution. That's because of a weight in volume, okay? So there are a number of ways you could do it. The, I guess the fastest way is to basically go ahead and convert the 50 microgram to grams and then you set up a proportion, okay? So let me explain what that looks like. So here, we will start off with 50 microgram Oh, so let's put it this way. So we have 50 microgram here. Or what we can actually do is take this one gram of uh, 50,000 and then convert the grams to micrograms. So there are a number of ways you could do it. And what I was trying to actually share with you is the fastest way to do some of these things. So the fastest way would be to take this one gram of 50,000 milliliters, convert the grams to micrograms. And the way you do that is to say one gram is equal to a million micrograms okay so the grams cancel out and you have several zeros four of them can cancel out so you can have all of this four cancel out and you end up having essentially 100 microgram in five milliliters okay so that's where you are right now we can go ahead and set up the proportion now because the units are in microgram. What we need is a microgram here. And so that's going to be equal to 50 microgram divided by X milliliters. So now we check our units, microgram on the top, microgram here, ML, ML. So we can go ahead and solve for X, which is our unknown. X is going to be equal to five milliliters times 50 microgram divided by 100 microgram okay the micrograms cancel out so we are left with milliliters and so the answer here is going to be 2.5 milliliters but once again it says round to the nearest tenth i think we are good there 2.5 that's the nearest tenth do not include units so the answer you put in your response box will be 2.5 Okay, so once again, we are relying on the understanding of what ratio strength is, and that's what we utilize here. And then, of course, we want to make sure that the units are consistent for the proportion, and then the rest becomes almost trivial algebra. Okay, we have two more examples or three more examples to go, so we are almost there. The next example actually says clonidine HCL is available as an injection with a concentration of 500 microgram per milliliter. What is the concentration expressed as a ratio strength? 
Now, it gives you some guidance, express your answer as one is to something. That's what that means. One is to something. So, here again, we want to make use of the understanding that this one is to something implies that you have one gram over x milliliter because this is a weight and volume. Now, the question will be asked, how do you know this is weight and volume? We take a look at the units of the concentration here. It's microgram, that's a weight or a mass quantity, and milliliters, that is a volume quantity, okay? So that's how you know. All right, so there is a question or a comment saying that the screen is blurry. If it's blurry, maybe I think you may want to check your connection, maybe reduce the bandwidth a little bit. But if everybody thinks it's blurry, just let me know and I'll try and give you, uh, try and improve the quality for my end if it's possible. Now, what we want to do here is go ahead and convert the microgram to gram so that we can make use of this definition. All right, so microgram, the way you do that is we'll take the 500 microgram per milliliter, so that means one milliliter, and we will convert this to grams. So we recall that a, thousand, a million micrograms is actually one gram, micrograms cancel out, and this is essentially equal to five times 10, negative four grams. So we can go ahead and rewrite this as five times 10 negative four grams divided by one milliliter that's going to be equal to one gram over x milliliter so you're making use of the understanding of what ratio strength is we go ahead and solve for x x is going to be equal to one milliliter times one gram divided by five times 10 to negative four grams and that's going to be equal to two thousand so the ratio strength is 1 is to 2,000. Okay. So we're making good progress. The understanding is coming. We are getting deeper understanding of ratio strength, percentage strength, if this is your first time seeing the topic. And if you're an expert already, this is an excellent review of what the real definitions are. All right, so we move on to the next question. It's a beautiful question. So here the question says, express the concentration of sodium benzoate in this formulation as parts per million. Then it gives you the prescription. You have all of these components and their individual quantities. It says round to the nearest whole number. Do not include the PPM in your answer. Now, it's important to stress that parts per million is some quantity in a million units all right so here because it's actually more or less an ointment you're on a weight by weight basis okay so what we want to do actually is identify what the quantity of sodium benzoate is so here you have sodium benzoate and the corresponding quantity is 0 0.01 grams this 0 0.01 grams is present in 25 grams. So that's the total weight of your preparation. And so we can actually set up a ratio such as 0 0.01 grams divided by 25 grams. All right, so what this means then is we can go ahead and set this equal to some quantity in grams out of a million grams because that's the definition of PPM. So as a reminder, if you do have, for example, one PPM, one pass per million, it means you have one gram in a million grams. It was on a weight by weight basis, okay? And that's the defi definition. So this is more like for very dilute preparations. That's when you use pass per million. And if it's even more dilute, you use pass per billion. And it's an extension of the ratio strength definition. If you if you look at it more critically. All right, so having said all that, we still want to go ahead and solve for x, whatever that value is, that will be the PPM value. So x is going to be equal to 
0.01 grams times 1 million grams divided by 25 grams. The grams cancel out and you end up with 400 ppm. And the answer here will be 400 because it says do not include the ppm in your answer. Okay? So we are almost done. This is going to be the last question that's going to show up for today. And the question says, how much of a 1 is to 15 weight by weight mixture of haloperidol diconoid would be needed to supply 2.12 grams of haloperidol diconoid required to prepare a formulation? Round answer to the nearest tenth, do not include units. All right, so at first glance, it could be confusing for quite a lot of um, students. But once again, you want to default to the understanding of what ratio strength is. So ratio strength here is given as 1 is to 15 weight by weight, which implies that you have 1 gram of haloperidol deconoid in the total preparation of 15 grams. That's what that means. And we are going to set up a proportion. And the question becomes, what goes in the numerator and what goes in the denominator? So here in the numerator, because you want to supply 2.12 grams of haloperidol. The 2.12 grams goes in the numerator, and then you're going to determine what your total quantity is going to be. So that'll be x grams. You go ahead and solve for x. x is going to be equal to 2.12 grams times 15 grams divided by 1 gram. Some of the grams cancel out, and you end up with 31 point eight grams so the question says round to the nearest tenth do not include units so the answer will be 31.8 so I hope you found this tutorial useful once again if you want a more detailed explanation I'm going to put links to several videos in the description once this live session is over then you can take a look at those videos. But if it's a quick review you need, this is an excellent one for you if you're a beginner or if you're an expert and just need a quick review as you prepare for your exams. All right, so my job here is done for today, but yours has just begun. I will see you in the next video.